you will use user defaults in your project. That's not some sort of command, just a statement of inevitability. If you want to save any user settings or program settings, it's just the best place for it. And I hope you'll agree it's easy to use and flexible, particularly when your own classes conform to codable. As you saw, the NS coding protocol is also available. Yes, it does take extra work to use, and it can be quite annoying when your types have lots of properties you need to try and save. But it does have the benefit of Objective-C compatibility if you have a mixed code base. One thing to be aware of, please do not consider user defaults to be safe, because it is not. If you have user information that's private, like passwords for example, you should consider writing those to the keychain instead, something we'll look at in project 28. And remember, anyone can sit through a tutorial, but it takes actual work to remember what was taught. It's my job to make sure you take as much from these tutorials as possible. I've prepared another short review to help you check your learning. You can find a link to this on the main Hacking with Swift review page. Once again, it's time for your challenge. One of the best ways to learn is to write your own code as often as possible. So here are three ways you can put your newfound knowledge to use straight away to make sure you fully understand what's going on. First, modify project one so it remembers how many times each storm image was shown. You don't need to show it anywhere, but you're welcome to try modifying your original copy of project one to show the view count as a subtitle below each image name in the table view, if you want to. Second, Modify project two so it saves the player's highest score and shows a special message if their new score beat the previous high score. And third, modify project five so it saves the current word as well as all the player's entries to user defaults, then loads them back when the app launches.